We have now had in this country more controversy over Dave Chappelle making jokes about transness than we had over Joe Biden completely surrendering an entire country to the Taliban, which shows you where our priorities are as a nation. But Dave Chappelle, for his part, is doing something quite important. He's standing up and he's just saying no. And that's really, really important. It's important because most of the people who are targeted by the woke cancel culture crowd are not Dave Chappelle. They're not one of the most powerful comedians on the planet who's worth a bajillion dollars. Most people are people who are targeted inside their organizations, people who are outed for some comment on Facebook, people who have been ostracized from their social circles. And when they see Dave Chappelle saying no, they too are empowered to say no, because that's the thing about the cancelers. You don't have to be canceled if you don't want to be canceled. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't be fired. It doesn't mean that you won't feel repercussions. It does mean there's a whole side of the aisle out here waiting to embrace you if you decide that you don't care whether you are canceled or not by people who despise you anyway. So Dave Chappelle did another comedy bit yesterday. And in this comedy bit, he explicitly talked about meeting with the trans community, right? This is something that many of the people who were protesting him demanded, a meeting, a meeting. They needed a meeting. Now, I'm not sure what they think would get done at the meeting other than they would get to lecture Chappelle and they think, what, Chappelle was going to just sit there and apologize for his jokes, which comedians typically are not in the vein of doing. Well, Chappelle did another comedy set last night and he addressed exactly this complaint and demand. To the transgender community, I am more than willing to give you an audience, but you will not summon me. I am not bending to anybody's demands. And if you want to meet with me, I'd be more than willing to, but I have some conditions. First of all, you cannot come if you have not watched my special from beginning to end. You must come to a place of my choosing and a time of my choosing. And thirdly, you must admit that Hannah Gatsby is not funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry that he's funny, guys. I'm sorry that he's funny, and then he's going to continue to be very successful because he is funny. Now, even Chappelle, who is, again, the most successful comedian on planet Earth, Netflix, Netflix plays, pays him just oodles of cash in order to get him to do his specials with them. Even Chappelle is now saying that he is at risk of being deplatformed. He says he produced a documentary, and many of the major distributors will no longer touch his work other than his comedy specials. They're happy to make money off his comedy specials, but they're not going to look at his ancillary work because he's just too offensive. Here he was discussing this. This film that I made was invited to every film festival in the United States, and some of those invitations I accepted. And when this controversy came out about the close-up, they began disinviting me from these film festivals. And now, today... Not a film company, not a movie studio, not a film festival. Nobody will touch this film. Thank God for Ted Sarandos and Netflix. He's the only one that didn't cancel me yet. Okay, so he's uh, thanking God for Netflix. We'll see how long Netflix lasts or whether they choose to undergo this controversy again. Uh, here's the thing, Dave Chappelle. I'm sure that you and I disagree on nearly everything. I'm sure that you have attacked people who work with Daily Wire. I mean, I know you have. You've done it publicly with, for example, Candace Owens. I don't care. I'd be happy to work with Dave Chappelle. I'm sure Candace Owens would be happy to have Dave Chappelle working over here, too. We don't care because we are much more open minded than the left is when it comes to jokes that target us. Again, in Dave Chappelle's special, he tells two separate anti-Semitic jokes. No one seems to care, including me, because the fact is that, well, I don't like the jokes and I don't really think they're funny. I am not the arbiter of what great humor is. I'm not the sole arbiter, nor do I feel that people ought to be silenced on the basis of me not liking a particular joke. So if he's looking for distributors who are never going to cancel him, he will find himself on the right side of the aisle sooner or later, whether he likes it or not, because the left is just going to continue cordoning off all the areas where Dave Chappelle is allowed to work. There is a great irony, by the way, in the fact that the vast majority of people who are very angry at Dave Chappelle are upper-class white liberals. And you have a black man who's become incredibly successful by telling jokes coming from a background that was not wealthy. And you have a bunch of upper-class white woke liberals who are very, very upset at Dave Chappelle because he noticed that a man is a woman, uh, that a man is a woman is a nonsensical statement. Because he noticed that men are men and women are women and human beings are sexually dimorphous. Like, because he noticed that, the white woke liberals are very mad. Any other situation where you had a bunch of upper-class white folks attacking a black person, it would be totally unheard of. It'd be really wrong, right? And it, just another element of the intersectional hierarchy of privilege rearing its ugly head. But 
when it's Dave Chappelle telling jokes about a, a community that is supposedly at the top of the intersectional hierarchy of victimology, then Dave Chappelle must be brought to heel. So good for him for saying no on all of that. As he pointed out, he said, I've been, it's been said in the press, I was invited to speak to the transgender employees of Netflix and I refused. That's not true. If they'd invited me, I would have accepted it. Although I'm confused about what we would be speaking about. I said what I said and boy, I heard what you said. My God, how could I not? You said you want a safe working environment at Netflix. It seems like I'm the only one that can't go to the office anymore. And then he continued. He said, this really isn't about the LGBT community. He says, this has nothing to do with them. It's about corporate interests and what I can say and what I cannot say. For the record, I need to know this. Everyone I know from that community has been loving and supporting. So I don't know what all this nonsense is about. Okay, that, I'm sure that is right, by the way. I'm sure the vast majority of LGBTQ people who watch the Chappelle special are like, meh, or they laughed, or they don't care. But the activist class are the class that run our media and run the corporate boardrooms. So Chappelle happens to be right about that. So it's very important what Chappelle is doing right now. Now, is it enough to actually create a groundswell of ignoring these folks? I doubt it. I mean, he, he praises Ted Sarandos over at Netflix. Sarandos already offered a quasi-apology for airing Chappelle special. He said, well, yeah, we, we should have aired Chappelle special, but I should have told the offended employees that I understood their feelings and all that. that. That is always the prelude to the alligator taking off an arm. Netflix already fed them a finger. Now it's just a matter of how far they allow the alligator to go. Whereas Chappelle is cutting it off at the beginning. So good for him because we need more of this in our society, more J.K. Rowling's, more Dave Chappelle's. Again, I disagree, I'm sure, with J.K. Rowling and Dave Chappelle on nearly everything. But as I've said before, the future of this country and indeed of civilization and freedom rests not with people on the right who have already made our call that we are in favor of individual freedom, nor does it lie with the radical left, which has made their call that they don't care about individual freedom so long as they are pursuing, quote unquote, redistributive justice. It lies in the middle with people who may have sympathy for the agenda items of the radical left, but who believe that individual rights take precedence and that a forced to choose between individual rights and preservation of their durability and the agenda items of the left, they will choose individual rights and the preservation of their durability, even if it takes longer to get to their policy preference. I know what you're thinking. It's time to binge some more Ben Shapiro videos. Well, you are right. You should. But first, like and subscribe. Perfect. I'll see you in the next video.